Hello, my name is Michael Barber, and I'm an Associate Professor of Instructional Design in the College of Education and Health Sciences at Toro University, California, in Vallejo, California. In this video, we are going to broadly look at individual and group assignments in the distance learning environment. When you are thinking about whether an activity should be an individual task or a group task, the first thing to consider is who or what you want the learner to interact with, as that will often drive the nature of the task. For example, if the goal is to have the learner interact with the content, then an individual task in person or online would be most appropriate. However, if the goal of the activity was to have the learner interact with both the content and their peers, then a group task may be more important. The second thing that you want to consider as an instructor is whether you want the student to undertake the activity in a face-to-face -face or in-person context, or whether you want them to undertake the activity at a distance or in an online context. For example, if you want the students to be in person, it does seem like a wasted opportunity to have them undertake an individual task. This is not to say that you shouldn't do individual learning tasks when you're in person, only that when you have the learners in person, it does remove some of the potential obstacles to undertaking a group activity. This is not to dismiss or denigrate the power or potential of individual learning. Depending on the goals of the instruction, it can often be a better avenue to take. For example, most direct instruction is better done as an individual activity. The third thing that you want to consider as an instructor is whether you want the activities to be synchronous or asynchronous. These two images from author and consultant Caitlin Tucker provide just a selection of some of these activities. As it is illustrated, there are many things that can be done synchronously or in real time, both in the classroom and online. Similarly, there are also a number of instructional tasks that can be completed asynchronously, again, both in person or at a distance. Your job is to determine the specific types of activities that you want your students to complete, while at the same time considering who and what you want them to interact with, and the affordances and limitations of each of the specific tools and or modalities available to you. If the instructor does determine that group work is the best way to proceed based on their knowledge of the student's personal realities and the goals for the instruction, there are countless resources that provide advice for undertaking group work in person or online. Some of the common pieces of advice include allowing students to focus their collaborations on a real-world problem or on their collective interest. Also, ensuring that there are specific roles for each member of the group to undertake and, as one of the suggestions on this infographic from Drexel University, making sure that each group has a group leader to manage their overall process. Another common piece of advice is to set clear expectations and provide modeling and samples for the student. Maybe even break down the larger project or task into smaller components with deadlines that have some flexibility in them for these individual components. In thinking about these smaller pieces, it is important to find ways to make sure that students are working together and learning from each other. And not just treating the group project as a division of labor. As this infographic from Christina Del Medicio of the Nevada's Learning and Teaching Services suggests, it is also important following the end of the group activity to reflect on how the process went and each individual's own contributions and experience. One of the more interesting articles that I've read in recent years about group work has been this item that was published in the online newspaper Inside Higher Education. The article reported on a survey of undergraduate university students in the early months of the pandemic and their advice on how their instructors could improve the group work that was being assigned in their online courses. While some of the suggestions the students made we've already mentioned, such as focusing the activity around a real world problem or issue, assigning roles and specific tasks to group members so everyone does their fair share, and breaking the group activity down into smaller components. However, there were also some different pieces of advice. For example, 
the students recognized that oftentimes one or more group members simply became unresponsive. So ensuring that groups were large enough to accommodate this loss of contribution was important. Grading the group project collectively as a group to ensure that everyone got the same grade, which prevented competitions within the group to get the easier assignments in hopes of obtaining a better individual grade. As the title of the article indicates, there were eight suggestions from the students in all, and I would encourage viewers to review the full article for all of that advice. I return to what I hope has been, and will continue to be, a common theme throughout your learning experience in this course. As you approach the instruction that you are hoping to provide, the medium should not impact what you hope to accomplish with your learners. As you look at each task, each activity, each assignment, you need to determine the goals that you have for that particular item. Is it to assess the individual knowledge or understanding of a learner? Is it to provide the opportunity for students to develop the skills that they need to work as an effective member of a team? Once you have the goals in place for that particular item, consider the tools that you as an instructor have available, as well as the tools that your students will be readily able to use. There are literally hundreds, likely thousands of tools available to supplement in-person learning and to provide distance learning. Your task as an instructor is to find the tool that is most accessible and most useful to the students to accomplish the goals that you wish to achieve, regardless of the medium and regardless if they are working individually or in groups.